Greetings, 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 good people. My name is Dr. V and it's been a long day. It's been a long day, but I wanted to check in because I was preparing for my uh, mindfulness meditation session and I thought, hmm, this is a good conversation to have with other people like this is a good conversation to have with other women you know or anybody who's you know following me my students um my clients or anybody who's interested overall in black women's mental wealth or indigenous women and other women of color um mental wealth and so today I wanted to, I, just, I was pondering like this idea of intuition, of intuition. And I was curious about how other people think about intuition. And when I talk about intuition, I'm talking about this like gut feeling. It's something that you can't measure. It's almost uh, an individual's connection to the spiritual world, their connection to the natural world. Uh, I think of intuition. When I think of intuition, I think of, again, that which cannot be measured, but something that's almost a gut instinct. And I don't even know if I would want to call it an instinct, but I want to call it as a feeling, you know, like when uh, you feel butterflies or when you feel, the, you know, when you, you've ever been like in, say, the shower and you know that somebody walked into the bathroom or you're asleep and you know somebody walked in the room and you kind of feel that presence. Uh, even if you may uh, wake up or, or look up and no one's actually there or let's say you had a feeling about someone or you had a uncomfortable feeling about a situation like an environment but you still follow through or you had a relationship with someone who you weren't originally feeling like now nah, something about their energy doesn't feel good or it could be positive right uh, you may have come across someone uh, just in that first initial meeting and you think hmm, this is a person that I want to get to know something about their presence their essence feels good so I want to talk about intuition as it relates to mindfulness but also as it relates to our creativity like who we are as healers teachers and writers um or just who we are as creatives and so i'm gonna actually because i thought about this in relation to in relationship to something i wrote in uh, my book so i'm gonna read out of it shameless self-promotion but the title of the book is A Boss Chick's Guide to Mindfulness Meditation. A Boss Chick's Guide to Mindfulness Meditation by me, Dr. V. And so on page 25, I wrote about mindfulness intuition and I, I connect intuition to both mindfulness and meditation. And so and my spiritual belief and my mindfulness practice, my mindfulness meditation practice, I do believe that there's a synchronous relationship between intuition, mindfulness, and meditation. Meaning that I believe we can use mindfulness and meditation to tap into our intuition, like to be more aware of. Intuition is there. I just believe that through uh, traumatic experiences or even through socialization we learn to ignore our tuition we learn to ignore our tuition right so through socialization we're always told well if you can't see it and if you can't feel it then it ain't real right but i also think that through traumatic experiences especially girls especially girls black people indigenous people i think that we are taught to uh, muffle our intuition, like ignore it. That gut instinct that this person ain't right for you. This person should not be in my space. That that traumatic experience, it shuts it down. It shuts down our intuition. Uh, meaning that those little <laughs> spidey senses, those little <laughs> nerve feelings or whatever you want to call it, uh, that trauma prevents us from being able to 
stay in sync with our environment. Okay, so think about that. Now, what I wrote in the book is, and I'm just going to read it. I believe that there is a strong relationship between intuition, mindfulness, and meditation. See, I said that, right? So I believe that there is a strong relationship between intuition, mindfulness, and meditation. So what is intuition? I define intuition as a person's capacity to obtain or have direct knowledge and or immediate insight without observation or reason. Okay, so I define intuition as a person's capacity to obtain or have direct knowledge and or immediate insight without observation or reason so let's break that down so i do believe that a person is born with intuition and that they can tune into that intuition that they can tap into it and they can become more conscientious of their intuition and when i say intuition right when i use the word intuition i mean some type of knowledge so direct knowledge and it's that immediate insight right like i have something i know something i feel something about this person, um, but reason cannot explain it, explain it. And by reason, we mean how the mind makes sense of it. And usually in U.S. culture, in Western culture, we make sense of it through what we can actually touch, feel, see, or taste. Okay, so I'm talking about something different. You may not be able to reason, make sense of it. Um, Now, some people, I'm reading again, Some people refer to intuition as a gut feeling or an inner voice, that inner voice, or a sixth sense. Now, interestingly enough, (laughs) for those of us who are really nerdy, you know, it's like more than just six senses now, right? But that's okay. For the purposes of this lesson, uh, we're going to go with sixth sense. So some people do refer to intuition as a sixth sense. Now, I'll be honest with you. I also refer to sometimes intuition as not only your inner voice, but also like your third eye, right? (laughs) As your third eye. And I don't mean that in a religious way because people get all nervous and stuff. When you start talking about religion on social media, right? Or on science. I'm just talking about that sixth sense, that third eye. Like there's something that you can feel, but you can't explain it to others. Um... To go on, I also say that intuition seems to defy logic or any normal process of reasoning or previous knowledge. You usually have feelings of intuition in a moment's notice. So that's why I keep snapping my fingers. Those of you who are wondering, like, why she keeps snapping her fingers? Uh, I also write that intuition comes to us in all forms, feelings, warnings, or danger, even a dream. Black women, due to our ancestry, many descendants of the original human, members of the longest living human group on earth, and in our indigenous faith traditions, etc., are very intuitive. However, I also believe that black women, like many other women, have been taught to deny our intuitive gifts or to ignore our intuition. Now, I can tell you this, as someone who works with survivors of sexual assault and other forms of violence, I do believe that black women's socialization um, has taught us to ignore our gut instincts and and has put many of us at risk of becoming victims further. Uh, Furthermore, I know that boss chicks like me and like you Uh, who follow their intuition are highly successful in their careers, are happier in their relationships, and more creative than those who do not know the importance of following their intuition. So let me state that again. I know for sure that successful women, people who are successful in their careers, They follow their their intuition and they're happier in their relationships and they're more creative than those who do not know the importance of following their intuition. So one of the questions that I asked in the the book, uh, The Boss Chick's Guide to Mindfulness Meditation is how does one cultivate her intuition? 
how does one cultivate her intuition? And so I was just thinking that I think that that would make a great journaling activity uh, for us as a community, as a collective to think about. And I'll ask you, uh, feel free to comment or write it in your journal. Y'all know I believe in writing. <laughs> I believe in journaling. How do you tap into your intuition? Like, how do you practice ways of honing in on your tuition like actually calling your intuition up like hey i want to be more intuitive right or how do you know when that's your intuition speaking to you how do you identify your inner voice and how can you practice pulling it out like how can i mean really how, how do you bring forth that third eye let's call the spade the spade okay um, and I think that's an important question to raise because we know we know for a fact, and I'm not talking about we as in me, you know, we as in Ubuntu, the African we. I mean, just researchers, uh, people in business know for sure that some of your top CEOs, some of your top, uh, you know, your millionaires, millionaires, billionaires, successful folk, successful women, they do. They say it was intuition who told them to follow that. To, to proceed with that idea, to invest in that project, right? So, but how do you uh, cultivate your intuition? Like, how do you recover your intuition? That's like your spirit self speaking. That's your, your gut speaking to you. That's your third eye tuning in. But it's so much busyness these days, right, with our cell phones, uh, social media, uh, even like people who take classes, you're taking like four, five, six classes at a time, you're raising children while taking classes, you know, there's so many distractions that you can't even pay attention to that little God eye in you, right? You, it's there, you're born with it, <laughs> you're born with intuition, but how do you tune into that spirit self, that sixth sense? That third eye, because that's what that's really what's making you like God, like right. That's what that's what's making you a part of a larger uh, spiritual community, human community. That's what makes us like stars. That's what makes us like the plant, like plant life, right? <laughs> that's what makes us connect to say moon, the moon, right? Because we're all in sync. I mean, like, we all light, right? We're all light. We're always emitting light and receiving light, and you know. Heat, heated energy, even if we don't know it. So, but how do you tap into that level of consciousness? So let's call it consciousness. So if you are, if you're uncomfortable with this conversation around third eyes and inner voices, right? How do you, how do you tap into your consciousness? What's at that subconscious and that conscious level? Uh, the next question. So remember the first question is how does one cultivate her intuition and another question is, what is the relationship? What is the relationship between mindfulness, meditation, and intuition? Now, I define uh, mindfulness as being present. So being conscientious about your feelings, being conscientious about your body, being conscientious about your response to your environment. So that's how I think of mindfulness and and I am a mindfulness practitioner and I teach others how to be mindful and I choose mindfulness to be aware of my own emotional states because I can go from zero to 100 real quick so for me mindfulness now as an emotionally aware person as an emotionally aware person and someone who's aware of the impact of chronic stress and trauma on my body. Uh, I practice mindfulness so that I can be in tuned to my emotional states and my biological response or physiological response to my, uh, my, my emotions. But also I use mindfulness so that I could be more conscientious or present to how I respond physiologically, right? Uh, it, and that can be senses I can feel and senses, you know, that ain't necessarily supposed to be felt, 
right? So when I say feel it, right, that could be my temperature rising or feelings that most people don't pay attention to might be my hair standing up on my arms or it might be, oh, wait, why is my leg starting to twitch? Or I have a, a habit. Y'all probably catch this on video. I sometimes bite my jaw when I get nervous or when I'm thinking. I also have this vein that pops out when I'm overanalyzing something. So I want to be able to feel that vein or I want to, I want to be conscious, conscientious when my jaw starts to clench, right? Or I try to tune into that sense, like what made the hair on my arm stand up, right? And so that's what, that, that's what mindfulness is to me, okay? So mindfulness is being conscientious or being aware of your body's response to, no, I just, yeah, your, your emotional response to your physiological, you know, triggers, okay? So again, let me try to explain this. So mindfulness is being present, first of all, being present in your environment. Mindfulness is also me attempting to be aware of my emotional or biological response to my environment, Okay, by my environment, that can mean somebody walking in the room. That can mean someone <laughs> triggering me uh, through their presence or through their words. It can be me reading something, right? Uh, but just being mindful. Uh, and also, I, meditation is an actual practice. That's when I try to go into myself. Did you see how I just did that? <laughs> so the word meditation is so basically just uh, reminded me to settle into myself, like to realign my mind with my body so that I can call upon my spirit. But I ain't going to go there, y'all, because I don't want to scare y'all, okay? But meditation to me also means just realigning my mind with my body. Watch, watch me do this, okay? Meditation, realigning my mind with my body. <laughs> I love that feeling. It's a natural high. Um, and then, so tuition, intuition. So what is the relationship between mindfulness, meditation, mindfulness, meditation, and intuition? So intuition is me paying attention to that which cannot be felt, that which cannot be measured, okay, or, you know, uh, taste touch those those senses that we talk about you know smell hear sight etc so for me intuition is that sixth sense that gut feeling that third eye and i like to identify as my spirit self coming forward okay so how i can feel how i can feel everything that's around me and within me That intuition is that which cannot be measured, that which is my energy having a conversation with the other energy around me in order to move me forward, to give me insight, okay, to give me insight. So I'm going to repeat those two questions. How does one cultivate her intuition? And two, what is the relationship between mindfulness meditation and intuition and lastly a mindfulness practice can help you stay more in tune to your intuition so remember we all have intuition <laughs> we're born with, an, with intuition that's our spiritual self we're born with it okay uh and and uh some people are just more in tune to it and other people, especially people who have had, ex you know, experiences, a set of experiences with chronic stress and trauma, they tend to separate from their intuition. They tend to ignore it. They don't believe in it or they forget it or they don't know it's there or they overlook it because it's too much busyness going on. It's too much going on around you. You see when I did the busyness, that's like the particles. <laughs> too much. Too much sensory overload coming in. And I'm that type of person. I, I can experience sensory overload and I can't feel uh, my intuition. I can't sense 
my intuition is another way of stating it. So that's why I practice mindfulness meditation, because if I can't feel, if I'm not in tuned to my intuition, then I can't make sound decisions. I can't make quick decisions and I'm less creative. Okay. I'm less creative. So we need that intuition to be creative and we need that intuition to trust ourselves when we're making important decisions. Okay, sis. So I want you to think about that. How does one cultivate her intuition? What is the relationship between mindfulness, meditation, and intuition? And finally, Dr. V's personal and professional belief, a mindfulness practice can help you stay more in tune with your intuition. So, sis, I want you to go out and I want you to think about in your journal, okay, shameless plug. <laughs> and it's, you don't even have to buy the book because I'm giving you the secrets if you don't want to buy the book. Uh, you can subscribe, though, because all of this is about us tapping into our, um, you know, our cultural selves, our spiritual selves, even our intellectual selves, right? So that we can all uh, bring forth the best, <laughs> bring forth the best of who we are and what we represent all right so, so don't forget to subscribe and also let's start having these conversations around intuition and in the comments or, or in your journal go ahead and define for yourself what intuition is what it looks like what it feels like and how you can actively work to recover your intuition so that you can bring forth your creative genius